Hello and welcome to another historic video. Today we're taking a look at the Red White Energy Life Gain deck, which according to the stats on Untapped, is currently the archetype with the highest win rate in the format, so it's worth taking a closer look. And this deck is made possible thanks to all the new additions from Modern Horizons 3, including all the energy cards, as well as some of our cat synergies. And Ajani is one of the main payoffs. A 2-mana 1-2 enters making a 2-1 cat token, and whenever another cat we control dies, then we get to transform Ajani into the Avenger, a 3 loyalty planeswalker which can plus 2 to add a plus 1 counter to all cats we control, but more importantly the 0 ability is awesome as we get to make a 2-1 cat token, and then if we control another rent permanent besides a Jani and a cattle Avenger, we also get to deal damage to any target equal to the number of creatures we control, and once we start going wide with the cat tokens, especially when paired with the Ocelot Pride, we can deal a ton of damage with a Jani. So we do need some other rent permanent in the deck to make that work, and one of those is Amped Raptor, one of the main payoffs for the energy decks, and this is awesome in a deck where all our spells cost 1 or 2 mana, as we're guaranteed to be able to cast them with the Raptor's ability, and then as the leftover energy we can still put to use with our various other energy outlets. We also get to play with Guide of Souls, which will passively gain life and generate energy when our creatures enter, and whenever we attack we can spend 3 energy to put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and a flying counter on target attacking creature, so that can also speed up our clock significantly. More energy cards include the Galvanic Discharge, probably the best one-mana removal spell that deals with creatures or planeswalkers in the format, as we can maybe use additional energy to deal more damage, or we can have some leftover energy that we can then once again spend in other ways. And then we also have two copies of Static Prison. This one can exile any non-land permanent when it enters, although we do have to pay one energy each turn to keep it on the battlefield, but once it goes to the graveyard we can still maybe get it back with our companion Lurus, which can also buy back some of our cheaper permanents. And then Lurus also a cat, so also happens to have a great synergy with Ajani. And then our final energy card here is the Unstable Amulet, another red permanent for a Jani. When it enters we get 2 energy, can tap it, pay 2 energy to exile the top card of our library, and then we can play it until we exile another card with Amulet, so we can also play a lands from exile, and whenever we cast a spell from anywhere other than our hand, the Amulet deals 1 damage to each opponent, so that damage can also start adding up, especially if we have multiple Amulets on the battlefield, and even if the opponent removes the Amulet, we can still play that card from exile, so that's also nice. And then I'm also a big fan of a Goblin Bombardment in this archetype, as we can now sacrifice a creature at will to deal 1 damage to any target, also red permanent for a Jani, which means we can now play a Jani, immediately sacrifice the 2-1 cat token that comes with it, and transform it into the Nakadal Avenger, which can now make more cat tokens, and also deal damage to any target equal to the number of creatures we control, thanks to our red permanent. And then we also get to play with a new Ocelot Pride, a 1-1 First Strike a Lifelink, has Ascend, so once we have 10 or more permanents in play we'll have the City's Blessing for the rest of the game. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we gain to life this turn, which is trivial between our 1-1 First Strike Lifelink just attacking, but we can also enable it with Guide of Souls or Soul Warden. This one doesn't gain energy, but also triggers off opposing creatures, so it can gain us a lot of life back. Then now end of turn we get to make a 1-1 Cat token, and if we have the City's Blessing, which we'll get to pretty quickly by making all these tokens. Then now for each token we control that entered the battlefield this turn, we get to create a token that's a copy of it, so it essentially doubles all the tokens we generated. Great with the 1-1 cats, but also very synergistic with a Jani, as we get to make additional 2-1 cat tokens. And then rounding out the deck, we've got Leonin Vanguard, another cheap cat that also gains life, so has excellent synergy throughout. And then a Voice of the Blast uh, payoff for gaining life as well, as it will start picking up additional plus one counters, eventually gaining a Flying and Vigilance, and maybe even Indestructible with 10 or more counters on it. And the Guide of Souls can also maybe speed up that process. So that's our deck, the mana base. We're not playing with Ether Hub, despite having an energy theme here, since we would end up spending all the energy for mana fixing, since most of our spells are just single color cards, we need double white for Voice of the Blessed, so I don't think Ether Hub is the best idea necessarily, but we do have a lot of red-white dual lands, couple battlefield forges, Inspiring Vantage makes a lot of sense, so does Sacred Foundry, and then the canyon gives us a bit of flood insurance as we can sacrifice it to draw a card, and then a few prismatic vistas to fetch up our basics, could also play the red-white pathway, and then the channel lands for added utility, and then of course in the late game we can also count on our companion to get stuff back from our graveyard. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. 
Okay, we're on the play with uh, Quadruple Ocelot Pride. Well, I mean, they could be decent in multiples, I suppose. Let's try it. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Looks like a red aggro. So yeah, the life gain from Pride should come in handy. And we'll see Swiss Spear hang back. Don't see that every day. So I actually don't mind going for Static Prison to let the Pride attack, play another one, immediately make a bunch of tokens. That sounds good. And then wait on the Rapture. Opponent with double Haramuna Prunes, so those are gonna cost them some life as well. And now Epicure into Ginger Brutes. That's fine. Those don't block the Ocelots all that well. And we'll just play two more, I think. And smash. And then we should be close to the city's blessing as well. They could technically double block an Ocelot Pride. Yep. And I'll take out Ginger Brute. And City's Blessing has been achieved. We've got 10 tokens now. So they'll need some sort of sweeper. Making two one ones is not going to cut it. And uh, we'll keep Prison in play for an extra turn. And that's enough for a concession. Also a lot of pride for the win. On to the next one. Are you attending MagicCon Amsterdam this weekend? Then make sure to come say hi during the Creator Meet and Greet on Saturday and you'll walk away with one of my tokens while supplies last. Okay, we're on the draw. Well, if we're up against another kind of mid-rangey or creature deck, Triple Raptor's awesome. Against combo, they may not always be the best. For now, Breeding Pool. Can start with a Jani, can start with a Raptor, and then maybe we'll find another Ajani. The Raptor also has a chance of hitting a removal spell, so that's sometimes a reason to wait until there's a target. And yeah, opponent with Chalice of the Void on one. Pretty good against our deck. Luckily, we have a lot of powerful two drops to choose from, so yeah, I'll stick to a Jani, which will trigger Vanguard as well. And then we can maybe win through Chalice. A rumble, revealing a lot of Eldrassi, Dismember also, a powerful removal spell for colorless decks. And uh, yeah, a lot of spells that get countered by Chalice here. We're gonna play the Raptor and then we'll see what we hit. Could be another one drop. Yep, so may as well decline, keep the energy for later. And keep up the pressure. So now Ugin's Labyrinth can give them an extra mana. Opponent up to 5. And I guess 6 with the spawn. So usually 7 is where they start casting the bigger stuff. For now a Thought Not Seer is not bad. Takes the Raptor. Leaving us with one more. And another card that immediately gets countered, so yeah, we'll see what the Raptor reveals now. And Guide of Souls, which also gets countered by Chalice, so yeah, Chalice doing a lot of work. I don't think I attack with anything but my cats, which can transform a Jani. If we do manage to get the Planeswalker in play, it can pretty quickly close out the game. But we're putting now with a Myco spawn, blowing up a land, and searching up another. Might see them chump with a spawn just to not take out my cat. And another one drop. Okay, stick to the plan.
opponent's gonna finally accept. And then we can use the zero ability here. Finish off Thought Knots. And then we can put Alurus in hand. Which is something we can cast. Double Raptor plays defense quite well. Opponent goes digging. Finds another Micro Spawn. But yeah, they need to find an answer to a Johnny here. And we can just double block with the Raptors. I guess they could have a Dismember in hand. But we saw them mill quite a few earlier. Okay, so go ahead and could use the zero ability once again and just go face. Could take out the micro spawn attack. Got a couple of options. And if we play Lurus, we have four creatures in play. So then if I use the zero ability, we'll go up to five. And then we should just have it here. Attack all out, opponent can block two creatures, still take two. Alright, well, Chalice did a number on us, but luckily I transformed a Jani, managed to close it out. Okay, we're on the play with a energy heavy hand, you could say. A bit lacking in the creature department, but uh, yeah, hopefully the unstable amulet can provide more value for us. And then if we find a Jani, we've got the Bombardment to easily transform it. Authority, decent in the mirror match. Can always use Static Prison to get rid of the Authority temporarily. Bono keeps up two mana. And let's see what the Amulet has to say for us. Finds another amulet, that works. Opponent takes out our guide. And then I'll use it now in case we find a one drop we want to cast. Okay. can always discharge our own creature just to get three energy to activate amulet again. And yeah, Flage is a powerful one. Takes out our Soul Warden, gains some more life. Can eventually be escaped. A Jani was excellent and we have the Goblin Bombardment so we can actually immediately transform a Jani. So yeah, sign me up. To the hunt. Could also just wait and if the opponent tries to remove a Jani or the token we can respond with bombardment sacking because right now we're also just attacking but uh yeah getting the planeswalker in play and then immediately making a cat is probably still worth it no even though the opponent's also gaining life with authority and then now we just need more creatures to start going wide. Right, opponent does have a burn spell to finish off a Jani. I guess that's the risk of uh, not having more loyalty. This plot goes deeper than I and another discharge. So step one attack. I'll try and discharge my own token. Pay zero energy. And then use amulets and find a back of a Jani, that's good. Now do we immediately transform 
or do we wait? I think this time I'll wait, and then I can also maybe start plussing to add counters to the team. Yeah, let's just pass. The one ring, so that's gonna protect them next turn. Okay. Static prison can get rid of it, but the trigger still happens. And then... Opponent's not really close to escaping Flage, so... I think we just use this now to get more energy. Find a Guide of Souls. That can also gain us more energy, and maybe convert some of the energy we gain into Unstable Amulet activating. So let's see... Yeah, I guess we'll start here. Play the land. Can put Lurus in hand as well. And sure, we'll play the guide. And then no point in attacking. Opponent goes digging. And we can just take our turn. Okay. Activate an amulet seems fine. Play the land. And go ahead and attack. Settle the wreckage, wow. Okay, well, we can uh, still use our Goblin Bombardment here, at least. And get to transform a Jani. Jani wants to keep making tokens, but first we'll play Lurus. Question is if we want to use Static Prison on any of the opponent's stuff. They might have a replacement one ring by now. Authority is being kind of annoying, I'll admit. So we could start by taking that out, play Lurus, and then I can play another Ajani if I'd like. And now use the zero ability. And then let's see if I use Bombardment, sacking a cat, transform a Jani again. And then I would have two creatures plus make a token, deal three more. And then yeah, the one ring could maybe finish them off. So yeah, that seems worth going for. So they can gain life at instant speed. We can burn them out at instant speed. So our opponents are two. Don't have to be the first to act. The main concern is like Flage or Lightning Helix, although this is kind of sorcery speed. So I could just start sacking stuff in response now. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. A little bit light on interaction, perhaps. But we can maybe find it with Raptor or Amulet. And start with a guide. Opponent seems to have an answer. Fragment Reality. That's 
pretty nice answer since we don't get anything in return. Is our opponent blue white control, presumably? Okay, I'll uh, probably go for a Jani here. Unlikely to resolve, or we could double spell. Although I prefer keeping the one drops to cast alongside my two drops next turn. So yeah, let's go with a Jani. Amp Raptor is probably going to provide a bit more value. And our opponent had a reprieve anyways. And now authority, pretty good against us, as we've already experienced. So let us try a Jani once again. Nothing is more important than family. And play Vanguard. And then we could see a board wipe next turn. Alright, Snapcaster, get back Fragment Reality. And a Jani at least will give us something in return. Another Vanguard. Now also a Pride's looking good. And we found another Ajani. Okay, so I guess we can go all in here with Ajani and Pride, since they didn't seem to have a sweeper last turn. And then we'll also get to the City's Blessing here. Our opponent doesn't want to trade, because otherwise Ajani transforms. City's Blessing achieved, so now we get even more tokens. But uh, yeah, our board is definitely prime for a board wipe. Our opponent passes with four mana up. Are we playing in a Settle of the Wreckage meta again? Let's start with Amulet, maybe. If we see a counter spell, we know to adjust. Activate Amulet. Find a backup Ajani. And yeah, losing Ajani to the legendary rule is one way of transforming it as well. So that seems decent. We have a red permanent with unstable amulet already. To the hunt. Could also start pumping our cats, which is pretty good to be fair. But uh, now let's just start doming our opponents for ten. That adds up. And go to attackers. And then also Pride's gonna trigger anyways. So if there's a settle, something like this is probably fine. Maybe just send those. Right, and just a wandering emperor so they can exile one creature. Or make a Samurai. And then we have enough on defense here, especially once Pride triggers again. Yeah, this 1-drop does a lot. And so does this 2-drop. Now the Authority keeping the opponent alive here, otherwise they would have been dead by now. So our opponent needs a board wipe. If they can get rid of amulets, then we technically don't have another red permanent, so a Jani deals damage, but we do have a Raptor in hand. So no sweeper incoming. Samurai attacks. Yeah, let's uh, maybe force a removal spell. That works. Opponent's got an upkeep effect. Alright, Aurum's chant. So, cannot cast spells, but I can still activate abilities. And uh, creatures also cannot attack this turn. Okay, well, probably don't need to attack anyway. I can still put Lurus in hand. That's a good use of my mana. And 
go upstairs. End of turn, we still trigger Ocelot Pride. So once again, our opponent needs a board wipe. And then they still haven't dealt with a Jani. Can just jump now, I think. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Beat blue white control as well. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand feels a little bit too weak without double white for voice. Um, also, won't be able to gain life on turn two since we need three creatures. So has a few things going against it. This is a one-lander, but it does have more potential. And then I want to keep the life gain package. Amulet provides a bit of card advantage and maybe a red permanent for a Jani. So probably have to get rid of a discharge, even though it also plays into our energy theme. And a young wolf's or opponent on Yogmoth combo. Do we have a preference on which one drop? Probably the Guide of Souls aligns up well against Young Wolf and then can help enable the Pride the next turn. And the more energy, the better. Alright, opponent's got the new Sorin. So we'll be able to take that out thanks to Guide of Souls giving us an extra energy here. Question is whether we need to discharge now to attack for one. Or if we let our opponent potentially extort with Sorin, can always take it out if our opponent would gain three. Keeping discharge for Yogmoth could be safer, but I also kind of like the beatdown plan. And attack. And then end of turn we'll get a token, which gains us more energy. Opponent passes, and uh, yeah, we can play Soul Warden plus Amulet. Start with maybe the Amulet. And then Energy can also be used with Guide of Souls. Opponent might be sitting on a removal spell. If they have a way of sacking the Young Wolf at instant speed, they can have a 2 2 on defense. That could be good for them. I don't think I want to go all out spending energy on Pride if they just have a removal spell. So kind of a tricky spot here, to be fair. Maybe I just pass and then we can leverage Amulets or I can grow the 1-1 one -one, and then it's not a disaster if they take it out. End of turn, make another token, gain more energy. So, doesn't seem like they have spot removal. And then we're close to the city's blessing as well. Alright, Ella Damri can maybe set up some combos. Take my turn, and a bombardment was an excellent draw, gives us some repeatable removal basically. So step one, given my board, might be activate amulets. Can maybe hit a land drop. Or find a Jani, also excellent with the bombardment. If I play a Jani now, then I also gain more energy for Guide of Souls. Although with bombardment, we already have the city's blessing. Only problem is, I guess um, I haven't gained any life this turn. But now I think I can afford to attack with Ocelot Pride and the Flyer. And if they block with Aladamri, we can uh, use our Bombardment basically. And that way we'll have gained life to trigger Ocelot Pride end of turn. So go to end step. I'll go full control just to be safe. Get a bunch more triggers. And then now the Bombardment looks great. 
Eladamri requires two untapped creatures. So I guess they're not cheating anything and play with it yet, so I think I'm okay to just pass. And then next turn we can play Jani, transform it, and burn the opponent out. Yeah, I've been impressed by Goblin Bombardment. In some hands, if you can make any tokens, it may not look like much. But just the fact that it helps you transform a Jani and also is a red permanent does a lot for us. Hapatra, so that can set up some powerful combos with Yogmoth especially. So now our opponent could activate Eladamri to put something in play, but I have a response where I can take out Hapatra to prevent any combos. So I'm not really in a hurry. Can untap play a Jani and then force the opponent to basically make a move. And yeah, that's good enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a promising hand. A Guide of Souls into Voice is an option, if we need to remove something. Ocelot Pride could be good too. Yeah, I think that's fine. If we want to save Guide from removal, playing the Pride first is also reasonable. Shadow Spear we don't mind seeing. Okay, so in this case, I think Voice of the Blessed, although if I do play the Ocelot Pride, I get to keep up Discharge and we get to gain more energy. And then the Ocelot's going to be great at enabling Voice of the Blessed as well. So don't hate this idea. So up to two energy already. So our opponent must be on some sort of hammer time combo deck with Colossus Hammer. So yeah, having instant speed removal available at all times is going to be important. Kellen using the Adventure is fine. Probably see them get the hammer. Yep. So yeah, I cannot afford to tap out, or else they could uh, kill me out of nowhere. But now Voice of the Blast looks excellent. And do we want to spend three energy? I could. I don't think I'll need more than one or two damage from the Discharge. Grow the Ocelot Pride, gain even more life. And once we're above 20, the hammer deck is going to have a harder time dealing 20 damage to win the game, since they might end up with hammer on a 1-1 creature, sacrifice it to deal basically 11 damage, plus maybe 11 more. So 22 is kind of the threshold. And there we see this camp. They still need a way to equip hammer for free. Which could be Sigardos aid or the one mana instant. So being able to discharge in response is important. Right, opponent's got the hammer, so implies the one mana instant here. But we have discharge at the ready. And yeah, next turn we are threatening close to lethal. Opponent's gonna go for it now. We can respond. And that should be pretty effective here. They can deal one damage, not enough to take out anything significant. And then we still have some leftover energy to put Guide of Souls to use. And uh, Soul Warden's perfect too. Gain more life, grow the voice, attack. Spend our energy. And uh, I guess this already flies, but it's kind of interesting. Because yeah, the extra plus one counters mean voice could become indestructible sooner. Opponent's already dead, plus we could still play second main bombardment to sack more creatures for more damage. Awesome, so yeah, a clean sweep here. Six in a row against a variety of archetypes. Historic is quite varied at the moment, so it's a pretty fun time to be playing Historic. 
but looking at the stats, this red-white energy aggro deck seems to be the most powerful deck in the format at the moment, and I can see why. It's incredibly consistent, has a pretty solid game plan of making tokens, gaining a life, and trying to transform a Jani. Now the combo matchup is probably not great for our deck, because while we have a consistent aggressive game plan, we usually don't win before turn 4, turn 5, so a deck that can already combo off turn 3, turn 4 consistently, and that doesn't rely on creatures to win the game, think of maybe a spell-based combo deck like Char Belcher, that can easily win the game before we can present lethal. A deck like a Reanimator Strategy can also maybe combo off without letting us untap and uh, basically win the game around turn 4 already. So those are going to be the harder matchups for this energy deck. But yeah, in general, seems like a very powerful strategy going forward. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.